All right, so we're live on the stream here talking today about the Adobe Creative Cloud requirements. So for like a laptop or desktop computer. And this is something that I kind of never looked into personally. And I thought it'd be fun just to go live today. I haven't been live in the longest time and talk about like the system requirements that they recommend and like my thoughts on them, as well as some laptop recommendations, which after this video is posted, I'll include in the description below and you guys can check out. Um, And as always, if you do make a purchase through any of those links, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to y'all. But that's what keeps this channel alive and a helpful content coming your way. So first and foremost, I'm going to head on over to the Adobe Creative Cloud website and we're going to dive in and take a look at that and see what their requirements are. So we'll head on over here. So the Creative Cloud system requirements for these different apps, the basic system requires about four gigs just to run the Adobe Creative Cloud like manager, but within the individual apps let's start out with photoshop here real quick and photoshop is telling us that we need at least an amd processor at two gigahertz or faster now that could mean two gigahertz base clock two gigahertz turbo clock what they're saying is you want a good enough processor in order to run the program smoothly and consistently so a lot of processors and if you look at the google sheet that i created ranking all the processors from like least powerful to most powerful a lot of the processors are going to have a different base clock and a different turbo clock the base clock is something that the laptop can hit consistently and have good performance continually so they want that in my opinion that's where you want that two gigahertz is you want to have that base clock around that point that way you're not relying on your turbo clock to you know keep up because turbo can only sustain for so long within laptops. So right off the bat, they want to see us having two gigahertz of clock speed in our processor. And I'm going to go through each program and for each like CPU, and then I'll go through for RAM and I'll go through for graphics card. That way we can kind of look at these tiered across. So the next one we are going to look at is Adobe Illustrator. So again, Adobe Illustrator, they're not telling us the clock speed. And to me, that's because it's a less intensive program. So the most intensive program as far as design and photo editing programs are concerned is going to be Adobe Photoshop. Um, Whereas Adobe Illustrator is not as intensive. In fact, they're showing us that we need just a simple multi-core Intel processor and an AMD Athlon processor, which is a very affordable uh, budget-friendly processor. Moving into InDesign, same thing, not seeing a lot of power necessary on the processor standpoint. Um, Anything like an um, i5-10-210U is a great processor for something like InDesign or Photoshop or Illustrator, something like the Ryzen, let's see what we have now, we've got so many processors coming out, the 4300U, that one's coming out soon, so that would be a great processor as well um, for these more graphic design tasks. But talking video editing, let's head on over and look at the Premiere Pro specs. So looking at Premiere Pro, all right, so this is what I suspected. So they're wanting to see at least an Intel 6th gen or newer CPU or the AMD equivalent. So the AMD equivalent to that in my opinion, would be something like a AMD, let's see, that's the 3750U, 3780U, something like that would be an equivalent, um, or the Ryzen, let's see, 3500U, or even now the 4300U, those would be some equivalent AMD processors to that Intel 6th gen. Um, the recommended is an Intel 7th gen, so something along the lines of, say, a 7th gen 10, um, 510U or perhaps a 10th gen, um, even the latest, you know, 10750H processor or the classic 9750H processor. These are more the high end graphic design, video editing processors. And then moving on to the Ryzen side, we're going to see something like the 4800 H or the 4900H from Ryzen. Those are two awesome processors, really packing a big punch against Intel right now. Uh, and I have a lot of videos on the channel. Of course, if you want to see like direct head to head comparisons or anything along those lines, you can definitely check that out. Um, okay, I see you, Govind Krishna. Sorry, I dropped my cap there. Uh, post a video on the specs needed to run DaVinci Resolve smoothly. You're going to see a lot of similarities between running Adobe Premiere Pro as well as running DaVinci Resolve. One difference you're going to see, and that's actually not really true anymore as I go to say that, 
Um, and what I'm talking about is DaVinci Resolve's ability to use the GPU to help complement the CPU in running in the timeline and in encoding and decoding footage. Now that Premiere Pro has just pushed their latest HEVC uh, encoding and decoding setting, um, and I've actually filmed a video about that as well on the channel, you can check that out. Both of these systems are gonna run and need about the same requirements because of the latest push from Adobe Systems. I definitely hope this is making sense. Excuse me for the burp there. And uh, if you have any questions, definitely shoot them up in the chat section. I really appreciate when I can get some feedback from y'all. Okay, and then After Effects is our last one here. And we're looking at a multi-core processor. I see, I'm, they didn't give us much info here. And so I'm gonna lean really far towards the Intel 7th gen or newer CPU. Um, same with After Effects as I would for Premiere Pro. These processors are going to have what it needs to not be laggy, to be really smooth, and to have good performance in the timeline, during exports, during rendering, things along those lines. All right, let's head back down the line here, jump back into Illustrator to start us off again. 8 gigs of RAM is the minimum with a recommended of 16 for Illustrator. And then for Photoshop, they're saying 2 gigs of RAM or more eight recommended. This is weird to me because in my opinion, you're gonna see more power pulled from Photoshop than you will Illustrator as far as RAM is concerned because it's taking more power to run Photoshop. If you ever pull up Photoshop and then open up your task manager, you'll see that it uses quite a bit of RAM memory. So I'm gonna attribute Photoshop and Illustrator along the same lines of having at least that eight gigs of RAM. And then moving into InDesign, they're saying four gigs of RAM. I do lean towards believing that more uh, because using InDesign, you're not doing a lot of graphical rendering or creating big vector objects. It's more of text layout. Um, you're doing more book design, uh, publication, maybe even like uh, wireframing some websites, things along those lines. So you don't need that much power in those processors. Sorry, I'm going to share my screen here again. Um, so as you see, they say two gigs. I say four to eight. Um, they say eight gigs here. I say continually eight. And then once again, I would say eight here as well, because the issue I see here, and let me show you guys something real quick. This is something that I get into in another video. Uh, I'm gonna go like this, open up my task manager. Sorry if that blacked out anything so you couldn't see for a second. This is what I'm always really concerned about is the RAM, actual RAM usage. Let me see what's going on here. For some reason you can't see my screen right now close this out and then I'll open up this again. Sorry guys, something happened when I pulled up the, uh... okay, see that puts us back on. All right, there we go, that puts us back on. All right, cool. So when I pulled the task manager, it, it totally cleared out the screen. So my apologies on that. Okay, so the RAM usage, as you see right now, I'm using Google Chrome. I'm using my live streaming software right here. Um, and then also all these tasks are open in the background. So although that the system does require us, you know, four gigs of RAM memory, or excuse me, RAM or memory, people get onto me when I say RAM memory in one sentence, for some reason it just grinds people's gears. Um, you can see it's using 10 gigs of RAM just to run my live streaming software, to run and to run Google Chrome, as well as all the background tasks. So if I were go if I were to go to open up, let's say like Premiere Pro or Affinity right here, which I won't because it'll probably overload system just because of CPU usage, you're gonna see a massive amount of RAM used. So the issue is your, your multitasking is significantly diminished by just going off of the recommended specs that they provide. I always recommend going a little bit higher than what you think you need just to run a singular program um, because you don't want to rely on, okay, I'm gonna run InDesign, so I only need four gigs of RAM. Well, you gotta remember your system has to run so much more. So definitely keep that in mind with the RAM memory. The RAM, ah, just always gets me. All right, next, um, they're saying a minimum here of eight gigs for Premiere Pro. I definitely can see a minimum. Yes, that, that's totally viable. If you're only running Premiere Pro and you shut everything down, you understand how to shut the background task down so you can run it. But like I just mentioned in the previous um, t conversation, the task manager showed us that we're using way more than just the programs we have open. And so I'm gonna recommend that your minimum is going to be this 16 gigs of RAM. 
uh, if you're shooting HD video, keep kicking my microphone, sorry about that, um, or if you're using 32 gigs of RAM for 4K and beyond, um, because you don't want to drain out all of your RAM and then be left with nothing and your computer starts to slow down, lag, and you have a terrible workflow and user experience. And lastly, After Effects, they're saying 16, that's definitely smart, uh, 32 recommended, and that, that's going to be my, my investment of recommendation as well. All right, next thing we're going to jump into here is graphics card. Okay, so Photoshop, they're saying you're going to need a GTX 1050 or equivalent. Okay, now, let me ask you a question here. What computer that comes with a AMD processor of 2 gigahertz with 2 gigs of RAM, because that's what they're saying they recommend, what computer comes with 2 to 4 gigs of RAM and a GTX 1050 GPU? Or a GTX 1660 or a Quattro T1, Quadro T1000. No computer comes with those things. So this to me is unrealistic and I don't recommend this and I don't think it's necessary. I don't think you need a dedicated GPU to run Photoshop. Now, there are those like freak outlier use cases where people are running just tons and hundreds of hundreds of layers in their Photoshop files and their screen and their system just is computing so much graphical information that they would need a GTX 1050 or a 1660 perhaps. But for the base general photo editor or user in Photoshop, I don't believe you need a dedicated GPU. I think the integrated uh, Intel Ultra HD graphics or the Iris Plus graphics or the um, AMD Radeon 6 or Radeon 7 is plenty. That's, that's personal opinion and I've seen it work for myself and other designers and other uh, illustrators and for InDesigners, text layout and public publicists work very well. Same with Illustrator, um, except luckily they're not telling us that we need too much GPU usage here, which I again definitely agree. And then moving on to InDesign, same thing, I would hope video card, yeah, they're, they're not even talking about what kind of video card we need and I definitely agree with that. All right, next, moving into Premiere Pro, though, this is where I'm going to most likely agree with their GPU standards. Yeah, for sure, this works really well. So a 2 gig uh, of GPU VRAM or recommended 4 gig. So the 4 gig would be something like a GTX uh, 1050, which is what I have in my... Uh, let's see, what do I have? Oh, I'll show you these again. I keep missing that. So here we go. So the eight, two gigs or the four gigs right there you can see. And this is what I have within my Dell XPS 15 9560. I have the GTX 1050 GPU. And then moving up to say like six gigs of VRAM, that's going to be something like a GTX 1660 Ti. And that's going to get you a good amount of power to run smooth timeline to have good encodes and decodes and when you're exporting now that you have that new HVAC or HEVC setting within Premiere Pro. So definitely a really good GPU there is going to be beneficial. Moving into After Effects, they're saying two gigs of GPU VRAM. I would recommend going with more of these settings over here, having at least four gigs um, because you're doing even more graphical rendering when it comes to After Effects than you are versus just After Effects. Um, if you're over here in After Effects, and they're saying you want at least 32 gigs of RAM, well then I would definitely complement your After Effects rig with more than 4 gigs of GPU VRAM. And that's just doing a little bit of research into the GPU that the laptop has to come up with what you are actually going to be using. And lastly, we're going to talk about the hard drive space. Not a huge, huge thing, but you're going to need at least three to five gigs of RAM, of, excuse me, of hard drive space to install each one of these programs. Um, so make sure you have, I would say, five to ten gigs of space available for the Creative Cloud suite. Um, that's going to be plenty. And then from there, you just got to think about how much footage you're going to be having on your computer, uh, how many projects you're going to be having, so on and so forth. Well, that is all I have specifically. Like I said, I'm going to recommend some computers in the description below for each category if you're interested in picking up a laptop. And like I said, if you do make a purchase through that, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to y'all. But that's keep this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. I thank you so much for stopping in and just being a part of this stream or the playback. Again, I haven't gone live in a while. Uh, I just thought it'd be fun to do this afternoon. I had some other things I was needing to do, but wanted to put those off and just have fun going live with you guys. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see y'all here on the next episode.